Hey you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before starting with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and the founder and CEO of the Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, courses, videos, review books, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. I always like to go over the, the disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolute in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, and any of the questions that you see that I have here are based on the guidelines that are currently being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam, okay? So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, the nurse practitioner is prescribing prophylactic therapy for a patient with gout today. What is the best treatment the nurse practitioner should prescribe? Is it A, colchicine, B, NSAIDs, C, allopurinol, or D, Tylenol? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you guys, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first, so it allows you to slow down and ensure that you're answering what is even being asked, right? So the stem of the question states, what is the best treatment the nurse practitioner should prescribe? Um, so the question says the nurse practitioner is prescribing prophylactic therapy for a patient with gout. So remember, I always say don't miss out on terms. This clearly says prophylactic therapy. So you should go directly to C, allopurinol, remembering, as I say, Brittany's brilliance all the time. The allopurinol has the word all in it because it gives coverage all the time because it is prophylactic therapy for gout. If we're talking about acute therapy for gout, we're talking colchicine and NSAIDs, okay? All right, so question number two, the nurse practitioner notes a pearly, waxy bump to the patient's nose. Based on the appearance alone, what is the best differential diagnosis? Is it A, basal cell carcinoma, B, squamous cell carcinoma, C, actinic keratosis, or D, seborrheic keratosis? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, you guys, stem the question states, based on the appearance alone, what is the best differential diagnosis? So what do we have? You know, if we're doing diagnosis, we have to take it back and see what the assessment is, right? So the patient came in, the nurse practitioner notes that they had this pearly waxy bump to their nose. Again, know those key identifiers. Pearly waxy appearance is classic presentation for basal cell carcinoma, right? Remembering squamous cell is red and ulcerated, whereas um, the pearly waxy one is basal cell, and that's the most common type, right? So A is your best answer. All right, and lastly, question number three. A patient presents to the office with complaints of feeling as though the room is spinning. The nurse practitioner turns the patient 45 degrees to the side and has the patient to quickly lie supine. The patient expresses dizziness and becomes nauseated. What diagnosis is this a typical positive finding? Is it A, a migraine with an aura, B, tension headaches, C, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or D, conductive hearing loss? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, so stem the question states, what diagnosis is this a typical positive finding? So the patient came in, states they've been having this feeling that the room is spinning. The nurse practitioner turns the patient's head 40 degrees to the, 45 degrees to the side and then lies them back quickly to supine. The patient has that positive finding where there's dizziness and nausea, right? So first, you need to know what that is. That test is that Dick's hall pipe, hall pipe maneuver, right? We do this to assess for positional vertigo. So, you know, one classic presentation feeling as though the room is spinning is classic presentation for vertigo. But uh, typically when you're doing Dick's Hall pipe maneuver, you'll take the patient's head and turn it to the either to the left or the right. So turn it one side 45 degrees and then have them lie back quickly. They're typically going to get very dizzy. It's going to be very uncomfortable. They may even vomit. And then you can do it again, turn to the other side. Typically, after you do it one way, you don't need to do it the other for a positive minor because the, the sensation and the response is so significant. But BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, okay? 
Dick's hall pipe maneuver is what was done here. All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all know what to do. Make sure you meet me back here. And if you need any other resources, you can give us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also text that number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. The review book, uh, ebook, as well as paperback option is linked in the bio of this channel. Uh, we offer a self-paced review course um, that is also, the link is in the bio of this channel. If you click on it, you can uh, preview the course. You can see the breakdown and um, preview one of the videos so you get an idea of what to expect with that self-paced review course that is for FMP and Adult Gero um, for ANCC as well as AAMP exam, okay? We do have a five-week review course that is a group course that is available starting, our class starts June the 10th. Again, I still have that one slot available uh, to enroll if you're looking. I, I keep this class small because with that individualized week, I work with you guys um, based off of all of the assignments you have submitted. I do the exam readiness. Uh, I assess your strengths and weaknesses, but I need time to be able to work with individuals through that week. So I don't like to have too many people in the class. So um, there's one availability left for that. And then, you know, I always say give us a call or shoot us an email if you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one sessions because this is designed specifically and customized for you and what your needs are. So um, we have to have a discussion to get that set up, okay? But again, if you need anything, give us a call or shoot us an email. You can also shoot a text to that number. But make sure you meet me back here. And as always, happy studying. Bye, y'all.